good morning. It's amazing. Last Sunday, we were so warm and carefree, and now we're fighting a little bit of the wind and noise, but I'm excited to bring you this video today. You know, as I think about the wind and the noise that it makes, it, it reminded me of the noise that the world brings us often. You know, there's a, there's a lot of distractions out there that keep us from hearing from hearing God. I, I want to hear God more, don't you? You know, I, I love coming out to this park here. This is a, we've been out here many times, but this is a different view for you because usually we're in the wooded part. And this is the part where it talks about uh, the gardens here. And I'm looking out across all those grasses. You can't see them, but uh, they're going to be blooming soon. And all the old grasses will be cut down and the new stuff will be coming up. A uh, sign of spring that it really is coming. New life, hope. I love that. You know, and, and at this park, I, I, I love this quote here that I wanted to share with you. There is always music amongst the bee, amongst the trees in the garden, but our hearts must be very quiet to hear it. Wow. Don't you love that? That's not even biblical. <laughs> That's okay. It's a good quote. Taking time to be quiet out in nature. I love it. You know, it reminds me of how the scriptures say, be still. You know, I am God. How do you be still? I mean, you're going to be listening to this, most of you, Monday morning. The hustle and bustle of the new week is going to begin. You're going to be thinking about going to work and all the problems at work, maybe, and situations that you have to deal with. It can be very discouraging. You know, you're going to be stuck in traffic. You're going to be, you know, trying to get to your job on time. And it's just like, how do you be still and hear God? I want to do that so bad. You know, I love Elijah, the Old Testament prophet. If you don't know his story, where he is up on Mount Carmel, proving to the Israelites that God is the true God. And we know that true God made known to us through Jesus Christ. That's the true God. There's no other God. God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He came to us in flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ. He went to the cross to die for our sins. That is the true God. Okay, so contrary to what you hear, it's not about just believing in something. There's only one true God. The maker of heaven and earth revealed himself in Jesus Christ, came to pay for our sins. That's what this season of Lent is about. And I'm so excited as we get closer and closer to Easter. So Elijah, back to him. I love this guy. He proves to the people of Israel that God is the true God because they have all these other gods, namely uh, Baal. And they build an altar. And you, you got to read the story for yourself. First Kings 18, I'm not going to read it all, but it's such a neat story because he signs, Elijah says, whatever God answers by fire on the altar, that's the true God. So the, the people are crying out to their God and they're begging him and pleading with him and nothing happens. So then Elijah, it's his turn. He says, you know what? Trench the altar with water. That makes it harder to start a fire, doesn't it? I, I'm feeling the rain hitting my face right now. <laughs> it's, oh, at least, at least it's rain, right? So they drench the altar with water. And Elijah says, Lord, just want the people to know that you are true God you know has has pastor John from 15 five ministries if you're listening to this I want you to know who the true God is God who loved the world so much that he sent Jesus to be your Savior that's who the true God is he came in flesh for our sins on the cross is that wonderful so Elijah he wants to know that was fun Elijah wants to, people to know who the true God was. Now you know that it's windy, right? <clears throat> anyway, so he wants to know, he wants the people to know who the true God is. And after they drench the altar with water, he calls on the name of the Lord. And guess what? God answers with fire. It licks up all the water and burns up the altar. And all the people go, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Everybody's so excited. Doesn't this 
if it was a movie, it needs to end right here. But it doesn't end there in, in chapter 19. Now Ahab, the king, told Jezebel, his wicked wife, everything that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of those. Jezebel wants to kill Elijah. She wasn't there. She's not impressed. She doesn't care what her husband, the king, says. She wants Elijah dead. Elijah's afraid. He flees for his life. He falls asleep. An angel comes and ministers to him. Get up and eat. The journey is too much. Is the journey too much for you, my friends? Is the noise of the world drowning out the sound of God? Is it hard for you to be quiet, to hear it? So much noise out there, so many problems, so much trouble. The journey is too much for you. Get up and eat. Eat of the word of God. Hear his encouragement for you. And then it goes on to talk about how there was this earthquake. And Elijah got to witness this earthquake, but God wasn't in it. And then there was a fire or a wind and God wasn't in the wind and a fire and God wasn't in the fire. And then there was a still small voice. There was always music amongst the trees in the garden, but our hearts must be very quiet to hear it. Lord, would you please let the noise of this world just be drowned out? Will you help us just to hear your voice in the midst of all of our troubles? God spoke to Elijah in the still, small voice. Be still and know that I am God. Man, that's hard for me to do. I'm kind of a guy of action. And I'm always on the go. How do you just be still? Just be still. I want, to, I want to hear you speak, God. Speak your plan for me. Speak your purpose for me. And more importantly, speak your word of forgiveness over me. Remind me that I'm yours, that I have a purpose, that you have a plan for me, that you love me with an everlasting love. That's what it's all about. I want to hear that still, small voice. My friends, will you pass around that still, small voice as you go to work today and all the hustle and bustle? Will you remind people of the still, small voice? Hey, you know what? This is a problem here today at the office, but guess what? God loves you. The still, small voice speaks in the midst of all the noise and all the confusion. The voice that says, I love you with an everlasting love. You are mine. I will hold you by my right hand. Man, what a God that we have. I just want to learn to be still. And that only comes with the Spirit living in us, teaching us day by day to hear that voice of God. I love you. You are mine. Your sins are forgiven. Hear that voice, my friends. And you, as true believers, share that voice of peace, hope, and comfort. This is Pastor John from 155 Ministries. You have a great day.